Here we go then, week five of summer cyclocross for my weekly arse whooping by Paul Lloyd. And we get away well and he gets an absolutely mega start. Straight, absolutely nailing it into that first corner. Ed to my right there gets a good start as well, but I squeeze him out just a little bit there. So he done it to me the week before, I think, or two weeks before, for, so I thought payback time. I'll squeeze him out and get straight on Paul Lloyd's wheel. And look, you're gonna get the same master class again. It's the master kicking the maggot's ass. Look, out of every corner, bang, bang, bang. He gets on the pedals, puts the power down, and it is soul destroying. Even, I think it's just here. He gets out the saddle, just bang, bang, bang. We're on cyclocross bikes, we're doing 25 mile an hour. And I'm thinking, how long can I do this for? It's absolutely soul destroying. You're giving it everything, but there's that little, little bit inside your brain, which is just saying, if you carry on trying to do this, you're gonna completely explode and not be able to even finish the race. That's the sort of power he's putting out. Look, out the corner, bang, bang, bang. And every time, you gotta quickly get on that wheel because if you let the tiniest gap open, it's, it's game over. Even down here, look, again, bang, bang, bang. He's out the saddle, absolutely boshing it. And I'm thinking, please just give me a break. But it is, honestly, it's amazing to watch. Like, when you get to watch someone that's this powerful and just every corner smashing it, it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. You think that's the level I need to get to to compete with people at the top level of cyclocross. It's absolutely ridiculous. But through that sand pit, that's an absolute nightmare, that section. Next year, if they put that in, I'm going there the week before and I'm gonna cover it with grass so I don't have to go through it. But as you see here, I'm gonna play the first lap and basically, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna play until Mr. Paul Lloyd rips my legs off and drops me. But look, same again, bang, bang, bang. And you're just thinking, you gotta get on that wheel, stay on it and absolutely whack it. Look, he's, he's opening up on me here and I just, I cannot, my legs cannot give any more. But when he opens up this gap, you're now in the headwind, you just can't let that happen. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have to late break here to try and get back on. He eases a little bit, which gives me just enough time to get back on, which is absolute savior. But the thing is, that's where I know I need to work on that long drag. Like, hopefully he doesn't see the videos because he knows where he can just absolutely put it down anyway, but I am no threat to him and he knows that. But coming down through here, a little bit of a twisty section, so I thought it's a good chance for me to get back on. I seem to make up good, uh, good speed and good timing on the corners, but it's just that little bit of power I don't have on the straights and out of the corners every time. But you'll see here, we've got hurdles this week. So they've put a couple of hurdles in just to spice things up. So it's always good to be near the front for this because if there's any congestion, it can be absolutely carnage. But you'll see here, I think Paul loses his foot out of there. But I mean, he's just putting the hurt on. I think at that point there, Ed was just behind us in third and I think he dropped his chain over the hurdles. So now it was just me and Paul and I was seriously hanging in there. And I thought, you know what? If you don't ask, you don't get. And it's maybe worth me asking. So I'll play this little clip here as we come out the corner. Here's a chance the wipes it. Come on. I'd let him know the wife's here. Can't give me a chance. Let me stay on for a little bit so she thinks I'm a legend. And his reply was, "Come on, out of every corner, push." I can't. You've wrecked me already. <laughs> to push out of every corner. That's what I am doing. I think I'm not gonna lie. I think he. I don't know. Was he taking it a bit easy on me tonight? I mean, I'm still there after a lap. It's an absolute miracle. But. I was hoping he'd take it a little bit more easy when I said the wife's here, but no, look, he goes again. And you can see the group there, there was a group of riders that were just behind us, but you can see these gaps are starting to open now. And I knew it was only a matter of time before I am well and truly dispatched. I'm trying to do 
absolutely everything to stay with him because it's all extra experience and gains if you can hang with the the front guys for as long as possible or as long as you can hang with people that are faster than you it's only going to push you on each week but as soul destroying as it is and my legs are screaming at me and down here i think this is when the elastic snapped he got out of the saddle he absolutely whacked it and i was like that is just exactly the timing i didn't need it on a long draggy section but i thought come on stick with it stick with it you might he might ease but you know he's not gonna the man the man will have about a two minute lead and he still won't ease even even the rocket said to me she was like i watch him he's going round he's way in front of all of you i was like oh thanks babe but he's still going so hard and i'm like oh god yeah that, that's exactly what i need to know when he's just dropping me but down here this is when i knew it was completely game over. Once you've lost the will and you're not in his slipstream, even when you are in his slipstream, it's brutal, but you know that is absolutely dispatched game over. But it was mega trying to keep up with him and I hope you take something from this again. You just gotta watch the man's power. It is incredible. And that is what I'm striving to get to. Like everyone's gotta have a focus, that's mine. I need to start working on that power, that punch out of the corners to get to that level. But you can see coming through here, he's not that far in front. We're probably two laps in now. And he's telling me not to let the gap go. I'm thinking gap's, gap's dead and gone. I'm in absolute no man's land now. And the same as last week. If you look to the right here, I think it is. Uh, I just missed them. But there is a group of three riders that are hunting me down. And I am the carrot being chased again tonight. So absolutely nightmare for me. You could just see them on the left there. And I'm thinking I've got to do whatever I can to stay away from them. Because when there's three of you three people chasing you you'll see as i go around this corner that there was no gap at all and if they're sharing the workload i'm just burning matches out there so if you look to the left here there's that group of three and they are hunting me down and the worst thing was i could see every lap you can just see here dad's got the camera on paul lloyd's rolling through and i think dad says i had about a 10 second i was 10 seconds down on Paul but I was also 12 seconds ahead of the, the three behind me I'm not sure whether I believe that 12 seconds but you can see the gap now and every lap I could see them just getting closer and closer and I'm thinking there's nothing I can do about it I'm going as hard as I can and they were just gaining on me look every lap so i think it's just here they were now on the left you could just see them they were now down to two so i don't know if there was a mechanical or something like that for the third guy but look at this here paul's just he's way off the front he's absolutely nailing it down on the drops animal and then you can see me coming through here not quite as powerful definitely not as aero and you can see the two that are hunting me down they have well and truly close the gap on me now they can smell my pain now and coming up round here just on the right you could see them and i was coming up to some back markers and i had to decide now all these little bits here are going to cost you time which are going to allow them other two to catch you and it was damage limitation here i wanted to jump the hurdles but you know when there's other riders around the risk versus reward is just so high so i did have to get off there which cost me a few seconds but we were only like halfway through the race at this point here and you can see they're they're on me they can they can smell my pain they know i'm hurting and literally as we come through the finish line they got back on the on the back wheel and i thought i'm not gonna sit on the front here i need to recover so literally just here you'll see carl goes past and then we'll shoot it back to my camera I let him go past and just jumped straight on his wheel. And I thought, this is my chance to not, I can't say get recovery in, but you will get a little bit of recovery being in the slipstream. But I was still absolutely in a world of hurt. One, because I tried to go with Paul Lloyd. And two, because I was trying to hold these guys off. But I'm not going to lie, 
I spent the next, I think we had four laps together, say something like that. I spent the next four laps being an absolute wheel sucker. Carl was on the front putting the hurt on and I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to try and survive. And I'm not going to, look, he's, he's out the corner exactly the same, putting the hurt on. And I was, I was struggling to stay with it, but when you've got someone there to chase and something to keep you f occupied on the pain of your legs, we're coming through the last lap here, you know that you've just got to dig in and hang on to that wheel. So coming into the last lap, I know now exactly where I want to attack. My best option is on an uphill section. So we're coming down this little drag here. As it kicks left, it goes uphill. So I'm trying to just get the heart rate down, save the legs. I know if I take this corner well, I'm just gonna absolutely whack it. So just here, I've whacked it, put the attack on. This is me absolutely full tilt. Luckily, this lap rider was an absolute legend and let us squeeze past. I think I might have chopped the corner a little bit there because the tape was down. But as I got here, I looked over my shoulder and I realized I didn't do any damage. I didn't get away from them. I had no gap. So I was like, I'll sit back up and I'll play the game and I'll let Carl go back through. I think he comes back through just here. And I was like, I'm going to jump on his wheel and I'm going to try it again on the next climb. I'm going to try and recover best I can now. Hopefully that's put a little bit of a hole in his legs. But I mean, he's still giving it the berries and I'm thinking... Was that my last match burn? I do not know. But, you know, when you're on the last lap, you've always got that little bit more to give because you know, however hard it is, the pain is going to be over. So I'm sitting in here, I'm trying to recover best I can. And my next best option for the attack is the last little climb out of, we've got a massive long straight in a minute. So we go down here, sling a left, and then we've got the long straight. That's a headwind. So if we play the game, do a bit of wheel sucking, leave Carl out there, hopefully that's gonna burn his legs. So we're still actually a group of three here. And I'm thinking as soon as we get down to this end corner and it kicks into that little climb, that's when I've got to attack again and give it full beans, full gas, every last little bit I've got. Because ideally as well, you want to be in the hurdles first because then you ain't got any faffing about. If something goes wrong, it's clear and it's your chance to get over nice and clean and it's not that far to the finish from there so heart rate started to drop now after that attack and i'm thinking as soon as i get out of this corner i've got to ping it but unfortunately carl had the same idea and he absolutely whacked it so it wasn't an attack from me it was an attack from carl and i just had to dig in get on his wheel stay there and absolutely hang on. But then I'm thinking, where's the next chance for me to get in front of him? Because I've got to get in front before the hurdles. So I've got a clear run at him and so nothing goes wrong. And I'm thinking, get as close to him as possible. As soon as he leaves a little gap or there's a sniff of an overtake, I'm going to take it. And he eases up just here. Look, he stops pedaling and I'm like, that's it. I'm going. I'm, I'm dive bombing that inside corner. I'm getting into them hurdles first, getting over, and as soon as I'm over, I'm absolutely whacking it again. So just here, heart rate starting to rise now. I'm head down, giving it everything I've got. They are close to me now, but I know if I push as hard as I can and stay as tight on that inside line and leave no gaps, I'm going to make it as hard as possible for them to get back past me. So same here, nice and tight, keeping the power down. As soon as I get out of this corner here, I'm out of the saddle, absolutely burying myself. You can see heart rate's at 183-ish, and it's only going to rise from here. Also, I'm thinking, keep it on two wheels. Do not go down, because I am pushing it now. And then we're coming into the last corner, and I know I've, he's, Carl's still on my wheel. I've just got to absolutely whack it, sprint out of this last corner, and I just got it for second place.
And that is a wrap on summer cyclocross for this year. Super happy to take second place. I've got some serious work to do before I can stick with Paul Lloyd and actually give him a good battle. But it's good trying to stay with him for a little bit. I was happy to have that punch at the end after burying myself at the start as well. The couple of little digs to get second place. So super happy with that. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.